In the UK, we have a unique uncodified constitution where our monarch, King Charles III, plays a key role. This video looks at why this is better than a republic. In every state, there are three branches, the legislature, which makes laws, the executive, which directs policy within these laws, and the judiciary, which enforces and clarifies these laws. In a republican system, these three branches are separated under the doctrine of separation of powers. This holds the different branches of state should counterbalance each other, theoretically preventing abuse of power. However, the fact innumerable coups and authoritarian regimes happened in republics shows in practice separation of powers is not very effective in safeguarding democracy. On the other hand, the UK has fusion of powers, where the legislative and executive branches are fused, which has made our system incredibly stable. We have not had a revolution since 1689. This only works thanks to the critical moderating influence of the crown. The Swedish and Danish monarchies are an outside example of how well this works. The English crown technically must approve or reject all laws created by parliament, which provides a check on the prime minister becoming dictatorial. The king is also the technical head of the armed forces and police, which similarly deters any, however unlikely, armed takeover of the state. The prime minister meets the monarch every Tuesday by convention and must explain his actions there, which makes them think twice about rash actions. For instance, Tony Blair recalled how the queen put him in his place a bit the first time they met by gently reminding him of the many prime ministers she had known. The monarchy prevents politicians being overmighty. The UK, with Israel and New Zealand, are the only countries with unwritten or uncodified constitutions, and it grants us flexibility to deal with crises. This is why Labour, which on the 5th of December released its report titled A New Britain, with Gordon Brown as commission chair, should worry its people with its plans. The report proposed abolishing the House of Lords, our ancient upper chamber, and replacing it with an elected assembly of nations and regions. Apart from causing legislative gridlock, as this chamber would often challenge the House of Commons, this is clearly a step towards many Labour supporters' dream of a republic. For if every single politically influential person must be elected, then surely the head of state should be elected too. And once the monarchy is abolished, then a codified constitution would be a logical next step down the slippery slope towards a completely gridlock system, as found in the USA. In this channel's opinion, House of Lords reform is needed, but it must be done carefully, not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. For starters, many Anglican bishops, appointed by the king, sit in the House of Lords as Lords Spiritual, despite the 2021 census revealing that now only 46% of Brits, less than half, are Christian. This is an anachronism that must be resolved with the highest priority, and hereditary peers and political appointees should be replaced entirely by independently picked experts. In this channel's view, it is distasteful that party cronies are often picked over men of learning, and Boris Johnson's honours list is the latest example of this. The cry for democracy, which means people rule in ancient Greek, is hard to resist because we know systems where the people rule are the freest and best. But anyone who thinks for a second realises there can be too much people rule, too much democracy. Imagine the chaos if every law was voted on by the entire 67 million British population. Too much democracy actually harms democracy because special interest groups create gridlock, which makes for an ineffectual, unpopular government and the desire for a strong man. Case in point, Tunisia, 
where its constitution meant too many fragmented groups were represented in parliament, creating the political paralysis that led to a strongman president launching a coup in 2021. Clearly, a neutral, professional, stabilizing monarchy is needed now more than ever. One final point, a love and appreciation of one's history is at the core of conservatism, and together with parliament, there is no finer institution that embodies British history and unity than the monarchy. Our constitution is best summed up by that succinct term, the king in parliament. In conclusion, the monarchy is the keystone of our ancient, versatile British system, which successfully fuses the executive and legislative branches together. The monarchy thus affords stability that is envied worldwide, and it would be insane to abolish it in favour of a gridlocked, ineffectual system that weakens trust in politics and creates a public desire for a strongman.